Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So you may have seen classified ads in newspapers. So why are they called classifieds? Ads are here grouped into categories and each category is subdivided and this division is according to some logical scheme. Say for example, houses on rent, they will all be together, houses for sale, so they will be in a different subcategory. So, brides wanted, grooms wanted, so job opportunities, so these are some you know, headings you may have seen uh, in classified ads. Important thing is grouping into categories and following some logical scheme. So, it is not random categorization. Um, as a result of it, it becomes easy to search. So, in writing, classification is useful to deal with large and complex topics. So, you can break a topic into categories according to some specific principles and then you present the distinctive features of each category and show how these features vary across categories. So, uh, each category needs to have its own distinctive features that is very important and these features should help us distinguish among different categories. So, some examples a classification essay may take a group of things and break it down into one of the following um, three ways parts. The essay breaks the topic down into component parts that make up the whole. So, an example is here, three important parts of a car are the engine, the clutch and the body. Let us say you are talking about a car or how a car is manufactured. So, then how do you go about it? So, a good way is to uh, divide it into its component parts here and explain uh, each one of it in detail. So, here you are dividing whole into its parts. Second types. So, the essay here breaks the main topic down into main kinds of that subject. For example, three main types of cars on the road in India today are hatchbacks, SUVs and sedans. So, you are talking about say automobile scenario in India. So, how do you go about it? So, you say cars and uh, you know, uh, uh, buses, lorries, so that would be a broad classification. Then again uh, within cars, we know there are uh, many kinds. So, here you are looking at types. Next is characteristics. So, essay here describes significant features or characteristics of the subject. For example, important features of a sports car are a bright color, a high speed and an attractive interior. So, you are talking about characteristics of a sports car. So, you have identified three as important and then you go about it. So, in a classification essay, so you deal with a complex subject or a large subject 
by either looking at its you know parts or kinds or types or its characteristics. Classification can also be used to define a subject. For example, you can define a concept by dividing it into its characteristics. Say for example, you are defining a good student. So, who is a good student? So, this concept. So, how do you go about it? You look at a good students characteristics. For example, hard working, creative, interested and so on. And then you describe or give examples of each of those characteristics. So, that helps you define an abstract concept like a good student. So, in classification essay, we organize things into categories and give examples of things that fit into each category. Particularly, if you are you know dividing the topic into its kinds say how many kinds of movies are there. So, you have made categories. So, that is not enough. If you give examples that classification becomes um, very easy to understand. Let us look at an example here. So, you are say writing about types of teachers and then you will have say an introductory paragraph, which is, is your thesis statement and introduces uh, 4 or 5 whatever the kinds you are uh, making here. And then your developmental paragraphs will deal with uh, those categories you have made and uh, uh, they will also include uh, examples. So, before writing it is very important to decide on the classification criteria. So, how are you going to classify things? So, we should think according to what properties we are going to classify things. So, the criteria must be discriminating and the emerging classes should be non overlapping. Say for example, say you are classifying movies. So, one way is you can say you can classify movies according to genre like comedy, uh, drama, uh, action. So, that sounds fine at one level, but there are some uh, you know examples which actually can fit into more than one category. So, that is why now we have hybrid genres as well. So, something like a tragic comedy, dark comedy and so on. So, if you are say talking about classifying movies, then you might want to classify them according to the certificates issued by the censor board. For example, in India movies are given mainly three um, uh, grades uh, A, U bar A and U. So, if you classify movies according to this uh, grades, then it would be discriminating and the uh, classes would be non overlapping, because a single movie cannot be put under two categories, if you follow this kind of classification scheme. Once you have identified categories, you develop every category with specific and informative details. So, in this case say for example, um, movies released last year which were given the certificate U. So, then you uh, talk about uh, why they got U and um, you give some examples and so on. So, you need to give details about the categories. One important thing here is you need to be careful while making categories. Uh, that might be offensive. So, we should not hurt sentiments of people. Say you are talking about students in class. So, it is not wise to categorize them according to say their intelligence and say uh, intelligent students and then 
not so intelligent students. So, that kind of classification is actually not very desirable. So, classification scheme which you adopt should be uh, you know non offensive that is very important. So, planning and drafting a classification essay. So, the first question you would ask yourself is what is my purpose in this classification. So, am I going to describe this topic or am I actually you know first classifying and then zeroing on only one of those things. Uh, maybe for further uh, research purposes. So, what exactly is your purpose or you just want to inform your reader say uh, your topic is a good student. So, you are uh, talking about characteristics of a good student there your intention is to inform people or rather implicitly you know tell readers to inculcate those uh, characteristics. Who is my audience and what will interest them? So, this is again very important. So, say if you are writing for newspaper and um, you want it to be a bit funny, then you might adopt some kind of funny classification uh, criteria. So, that will amuse your audience. So, that is very important. What categories can I make and related to that what features distinguish one category from the other. So, this we have been for you know stressing on this fact that you need to have a logical scheme while making categories. So, these categories should be non overlapping and you should be able to distinguish one from the other very clearly. So, that kind of classification is very important. Say for example, you have students in class. So, then you can say students who are 5 feet tall 5 and below say and students who are taller than 5 feet. So, that would be a neat uh, classification. So, the categories uh, would be non overlapping. So, but if you say you make a category like students from rural areas and students from urban areas, then it might be problematic, because a person may have stayed in rural areas for some time and then moved to urban areas or vice versa. So, there may be some you know complications in such things. So, categories we make should be very um, apt and uh, you know should be easily distinguishable from one another. So, the introduction of a classification essay is uh, quite straightforward. So, recall that the introductory paragraph of an essay starts with some general remarks and then introduces the topic and then it includes the thesis statement. So, the thesis statement in a classification essay you usually mention something like that. There are these many number of something you know according to their properties. Say for example, friends can be classified into uh, five groups according to where you first uh, met them. So, then you, you know you can have friends who people who are uh, you know friends uh, with you since your childhood, friends uh, you know at workplace, um, now then um, friends you met on uh, trains and buses while traveling or friends on um, social media. So, so uh, you have first you know number here uh, and then you briefly mention um, the classification criteria as well. So, in the body we discuss the categories. So, you have made five categories of friends. So, ideally you would have five different paragraphs each one for one particular type of friends. Then clearly indicate how you are arranging categories. So, say in this classification you know example about friends. 
So, how are you going to um, discuss each of those categories? So, you need to have some scheme say maybe you start with uh, childhood. So, you move chronologically. So, uh, people who are friends with you since childhood and then people who became your friends um, when you entered uh, college and then people at workplace and then you know, friends at uh, friends on social media. So, some kind of uh, you know uh, order uh, how you arrange these categories and then within each category discuss distinguishing features. So, if you say so friends from childhood, so you have to say. So, uh, they are your friends probably uh, since uh, you know uh, you, uh, you, were, uh, you were in class 1 or so um, something like that. So, uh, the distinguishing features uh, should be clearly explained under each of those and you also give examples. So, that the classification becomes clear to your readers. So, in the developmental paragraphs you need to define each type you mentioned in the thesis. So, we will look at an example then uh, how you know we go about a classification as it becomes clear. You may also need to show the similarities and or differences of these types. So, sometimes there may be some similarities, but uh, differences also you have to clearly show that these categories are uh, different. And as I mentioned giving examples would enable your readers to understand these things better. Coming to language, so we use transitions like first type, first kind, the second kind, these kinds of words we use while uh, dealing with the categories. Now, let us look at an example. This is called a new classification system for water based life and this is as you can see here uh, is written by Dirk Schulz Markoch um, and it is taken from airspacemagazine.com. So, let us look at this example in detail. A new classification system for water based life. Life is incredibly diverse on earth and wherever we find sufficient liquid water, we almost always find life. The only major caveat to this involves temperature. The highest known temperature at which metabolism and growth can still occur in water is 122 degrees Celsius, 252 degrees Fahrenheit. For example, at high pressure hypothermal vents. The lowest temperature seems to be about minus 18 degrees Celsius about 0 degrees Fahrenheit. So, this is the introductory paragraph of uh, an essay. This essay is about you know um, water based life. So, how you are going to classify it. So, this introduces uh, the topic life on earth and um, its connection with uh, liquid water. So, wherever there is some liquid water we find life. So, it starts with something very general and then it moves on to restrict it. It introduces another factor that is temperature. So, temperature and water you know there are some conditions here. So, when these conditions are fulfilled then uh, you know we can find the life. Second paragraph, our astrobiology group at the Tactical University in Berlin has used these known constraints on life to come up with a system of planetary environment types or PETs. The classification scheme identifies three main classes of water environment PET 0, 1 and 2. It also includes subgroupings according to the type of water present atmospheric water A such as clouds or rain, surface water S such as morning dew or oceans and subsurface or ground water G. So, now here the writer introduces 
the classification scheme. So, this is to talk about life, planetary life. And um, this is called PETs. So, there are mainly three categories uh, of water environment. So, in the previous paragraph the writer has established the importance of water and its connection with uh, presence of life. So, now this scheme you know classifies uh, uh, environments based on water. So, uh, they are called PET 0, 1 and 2 and then there are subgroupings under it. So, A represents water is in atmospheric atmosphere. S means water is on surface and G means it is subsurface or ground water. Now, the writer goes on to uh, explain about this classification system in detail. So, let us look at it. A planet designated P D 0 would have no surface water, but Mars would be classified P E T 0 g and Venus P T 0 a. Neither classification would necessarily exclude the possibility of life, since Mars could still host life in the subsurface and Venus in the lower atmosphere. So, now the writer you know uh, gives examples to describe these categories. So, a PET 0, if you have classified a planet like this, it means there is no surface water. So, uh, taking the uh, instances, you know, we know Mars and Venus. So, we know how would you classify Mars. Mars would be PET 0 G. It means there is water in subsurface of Mars. Venus would be P E T 0 A, it means uh, there is some water in the lower atmosphere of Venus. P E T 1 and 2 planets have a surface water layer ranging from a thin water film for example, warning dew to massive earth like oceans. Water could be present either on or just beneath the surface, for example, at a rock water interface. Jupiter's moon Europa would be an example of a PET 1 planetary body. A PET 2 planet is characterized by two liquid water layers separated by an interstitial high pressure water ice layer. So, all these are PET 0 uh, examples. Now, what about PET 1 and 2? So, here writer says Jupiter's moon Europa is P T 1, because uh, you know water could be present either on or just beneath the surface for example, at a rock water interface. A P T 2 means there is two liquid water layers separated by an interstitial high pressure water ice layer. Moving on. Although some environments on earth such as the Atacama desert could be subclassified as P T 0 g, our planet as a whole is P T 1 a s g with all types of water atmospheric surface and subsurface being present and available. So, earth is classified like this, because uh, water is available in atmosphere, surface and ground. Now, the concluding paragraph, this kind of classification scheme should be useful as we try to identify habitable worlds among the 3500 and counting exoplanets now known to exist. The system does have one shortcoming however, if an exoplanet's biochemistry is markedly different from earth's for example, if life uses a different type of liquid solvent or energy source, the assessment of its habitability would change. A solvent such as ammonia or even an ammonia water mixture would lower the temperature at which life might be viable. 
and if life can use a different source of energy such as magnetic fields or thermal gradients, this could open up new habitats as well. So, the suggested PD system is just a first attempt to generalize some of the planetary habitats out there and is unlikely to encompass all the possibilities for life in the universe. So, now the writer answers the question, so why this classification system, why do we need it. So, writer here says this is useful uh, you know to uh, classify uh, habitable worlds among 3500 and even more still being discovered exoplanets. So, uh, how do we you know classify those planets in terms of possibility of life. Writer also here discusses possible limitations of this classification scheme. So, here you can see if the biochemistry is different, because this classification system is based on the premise that water and uh, presence of life are interconnected. So, if that does not work, then this classification system may not work. So, writer here acknowledges that. Um, Nevertheless, if you look at the uh, concluding sentence, it is a first attempt to generalize some of the planetary habitats out there. So, you have so many things. So, how do you classify them? So, this classification system helps in you know looking at 3500 and more exoplanets and uh, talking about them. Now, here is a task for you you can choose one of these topics and uh, think about appropriate categories to uh, describe uh, these things in detail. I will very quickly uh, look at each of these. First one college teachers. So, how could you classify? So, you could classify them according to official position like assistant professor, associate professor then you could classify them according to uh, their um, main specialization area or you could also classify them according to personality traits. Somebody who you know encourages lot of interaction in the class, some people who do not do that. So, you can uh, follow different classification criteria. Second movies, movies we have discussed. So, uh, you could uh, classify them according to genres, according to year of the release, uh, then according to uh, sensor certificate, uh, according to duration you can classify. Friends, so uh, friends again we have discussed. So, these could be uh, you know childhood friends, workplace friends, social media friends, far away friends you know uh, these kinds of classification you can do. Lies, so uh, you know white lies, uh, really difficult to identify lies. So, you can think of you know uh, very funny classification system for this kind of uh, you know, uh, topic. We move to next important pattern of organization that is comparison. So, in real life we often compare two or more things. We look at similarities among them, sometimes differences, sometimes both. Why do we do it? Our purpose may be here you know simply to choose between alternatives. So, some examples are here. So, you are you know there at a restaurant and then you have to decide between pizza and burger. So, which one you would go for? So, you will compare you know their taste, your preferences, then you decide. Then you have to decide on your major. Are you going to measure in chemistry or mathematics? So, you compare uh, the career options, your interests, uh, then available options like you know best places to study them. 
So, all these factors you compare. S study or work, so whether you want to continue your studies or you want to take up a job and then think about continuing education some time later. So, these two options you compare and then you have job you know offer from two companies x and y. So, which one you are going to choose. So, you will compare companies performance, uh, job prospects there, uh, salary, other in, uh, perks. So, all these options you compare contrast and then uh, you know you finally, make a choice. Sometimes, this comparison also helps us understand unfamiliar things. For example, say in Indian context cricket, the game of cricket is more familiar than baseball. So, if you compare these two things and you know you focus on how baseball is similar to cricket in some aspects, but different in other aspects that kind of uh, you know a comparison will help you understand more about uh, baseball. So, when you are writing a comparison essay, you need to select items for comparison. So, needless to say there should be some similarity, some common ground among these items. Uh, if there is no similarity, then comparison cannot be made. That is where we have the saying comparing apples and oranges. So, you are going to buy say apples. So, you have to compare one variety of apple with another variety of apple itself. You cannot compare apples with oranges. So, when you are comparing take two things which are similar in nature and then you can look at similarities or differences. Two very dissimilar things cannot be compared. So, that does not work. Then once you have selected items for comparison, then you subdivide into traits, characteristics, features and then you compare them. So, let us look at some example. So, this is a table comparing two versions of iPhone. So, iPhone 8 plus and iPhone X, iPhone 10. So, your idea here is you know you, you want to compare both of these and then decide which one you want to buy. So, here you need to compare only you know I, one iPhone with model with another one. If you compare you know iPhone with some other brand. So, that comparison is again very different. So, now you have zeroed in on iPhone, you have decided that you will buy iPhone, but now you are torn between iPhone 8 plus and iPhone 10. So, which one? So, what are the grounds you know you use to compare these two? Some I have listed here. So, let us look at them. So, performance what is there in iPhone 8 plus and iPhone 10, then display screen size. Then now you see that uh, iPhone 10 has slightly bigger display, storage capacity it is same, camera it is same, battery capacity. You see here that iPhone 10 again has slightly bigger capacity, RAM is again same, price iPhone is significantly more expensive and then some rating by a, a well known um, tech, tech magazine or user rating. So, you see that iPhone 10 has again slightly higher rating. So, by comparing similar items you know using some parameters you get an idea, it helps you make a choice. Let us look at another example. So, here you are planning to buy a car. So, again cars 
come in different shapes and sizes. So, you cannot compare a small car with a big car. So, then comparison is problematic. So, now you have decided that you will buy a small car and your budget say is also fixed say around, uh, within uh, 3 lakhs. So, now you have two options before you, you are comparing uh, those two options. So, let us look at them. So, uh, the two uh, cars you have chosen are Renault Quaid and Maruti Suzuki Alto 800. So, what are the parameters here? So, here parameters are different, we saw here in for a mobile phone parameters are different, for a car things are different here. So, price and then CC, um, engine capacity, then number of cylinders, power, uh, torque, mileage, uh, then other features like you know airbags, air conditioner. So, now you can compare these two things and then depending on what you prefer, you can now make a choice. Now, you can also use analogy to uh, compare things and to understand a new and unfamiliar thing. So, let us look at an example. The atmosphere of earth acts like any window in serving two very important functions. It lets light in and it permits us to look out. It also serves as a shield to keep out dangerous or uncomfortable things. A normal glazed window lets us keep our houses warm by keeping out cold air and it prevents rain, dirt and unwelcome insects and animals from coming in. Earth's atmosphere window also helps to keep our planet at a comfortable temperature by holding back radiated heat and protecting us from dangerous levels of ultraviolet light. Uh, this written by Lester Del Rey uh, is, is an extract from the mysterious sky. So, as you can see here, the writer here is comparing the atmosphere of earth with a window. Why? There are some similarities there. So, both actually serve two important functions. So, what are these? It lets light in and it permits us to look out. So, this is one. It also serves as a shield to keep out dangerous or uncomfortable things. So, this is so, how are these two functions you know similar between uh, the atmosphere of earth and the window? So, the details follow here. A normal glazed window lets us keep our houses warm by keeping out cold air and it prevents rain, dirt and unwelcome insects and animals from coming in. Just like a uh, window keeps our house warm and you know uh, lets uh, the sunlight, but uh, keeps out cold air, rain, dirt, insects etcetera. So, earth's atmosphere window also helps to keep our planet at a comfortable temperature by holding back radiated heat. So, some function related to temperature here. So, this is common thing between uh, window and the uh, earth's atmosphere and protects us from dangerous levels of ultraviolet light. A window protects us from rain, dirt, unwelcome insects etcetera, etcetera. Uh, earth's atmosphere protects us from uh, dangerous levels of ultraviolet light. So, here you are trying to uh, you know explain the functions of earth's atmosphere and you are doing it by using an analogy by comparing it with an object which is very familiar, very well known that is a window. So, this way a comparison helps understand an unfamiliar thing. Now, let us look at a sample text. 
So, this text is called differences in parliamentary and presidential systems. This is taken from an article titled presidential versus parliamentary systems. So, what is there in the text? So, let us look at it in detail. Differences in parliamentary and presidential systems are the election of the chief executive and the debate styles. The most striking difference between presidential and parliamentary system is in the election of the chief executive. In parliament systems, the chief executive is not chosen by the people, but by the legislature. Typically, the majority party in the parliament chooses the chief executive known as the prime minister. However, in some parliaments, there are so many parties represented that none hold a majority. Parliament members must decide among themselves whom to elect as prime minister. The fusion of the legislative and executive branches in the parliamentary system tends to lead to more discipline among political party members. Party members in parliaments almost always vote strictly along party lines. Presidential systems, on the contrary, are less disciplined and legislators are free to vote their conscious with fewer repercussions from their party. Debate styles also differ between the two systems. Presidential system legislators make use of a filibuster on the or the right to prolong speeches to delay legislative action. Parliamentary systems will call for closure or an end to debate, so voting can begin. Continuing, common features in the two systems. In both presidential and parliamentary systems, the chief executive can be removed from office by the legislature. Parliamentary systems use a vote of no confidence, where a majority of parliament members vote to remove the prime minister from office. A new election is then called. In presidential systems, a similar process is used, where legislatures vote to impeach the president from office. So, as is clear, this text actually compares two different forms of democracy, which are present in the world at present. So, uh, these are parliamentary democracy and presidential democracy. So, the first part actually talks about differences between these two. So, what are the parameters? It is clearly mentioned in the very beginning. One is how the chief executive is elected and then the second one, how the debate is conducted. So, now these two points are explained in detail in the next paragraph. So, the most striking difference between presidential and parliamentary is in the election of the chief executive. So, what is how it works? So, you can see in parliament system, the chief executive is not chosen by the people, but by the legislature. So, people only choose legislators. So, now they um, choose the chief executive known as the prime minister. So, as a result here, the legislature and executive branches of you know, government, they are actually blended there is fusion here, but in presidential it does not happen and president is directly elected from the people. There is one more difference here, uh, how you know voting happens. Party members in parliaments almost always vote strictly along party lines, because executive and legislator is fused. So, um, if they do not uh, the executive falls, but presidential system it does not happen. So, uh, look at the key word here. So, 
So, on the contrary, so this is a key linker here. So, when you are comparing such linkers are used, here you are pointing out the differences. So, you have so far talked about what happens in parliamentary democracy, now you are going to talk about presidential system, where it is different. So, parliament uh, you know uh, in um, uh, pal democracy, party members are disciplined, but in presidential system, they are less disciplined. Um, okay. So, this is about the, all these things are about the first point. So, if you recall, in the beginning, so about this one. Now, the second sub point debate styles. So, debate styles also differ in the presidential systems, legislators make use of what the writer calls filibuster, right to prolong speeches to delay legislative action. But in parliamentary systems, it does not happen. Uh, there is you know a call to end the debate and start the voting. So, this, these are the differences between uh, these two systems. So, this uh, first part talked about differences. Now, some similarities between the two systems. So, what is the point here? How the chief executive is removed from the office? So, in both uh, the chief executive can be removed by the legislator, uh, but the process is slightly different. Parliamentary systems use vote of no confidence, presidential systems use vote to impeach. So, there is a small difference, but common factor is uh, the chief executive is actually removed by the legislature. So, as you can see here, the writer here introduces the topic, the writer here is comparing parliamentary and presidential, the points of comparison are mentioned, those things are discussed in detail here. There is sub point here. So, about the chief executive, there are two sub points. So, how the chief executive is you know elected and then about the discipline of the legislative members. Then the second point is debate styles and this is about common features. So, what happens in one system, then immediately this is followed by what happens in the other system. So, uh, uh, this is how a comparison essay is uh, drafted. So, how do you plan and draft a comparison essay? First important thing is, you need to think of a clear sense of purpose for the comparison. Are you trying to explain an unfamiliar topic or are you actually trying to inform people about something too closely connected, uh, too often confused uh, systems. So, that purpose is very important here. See, in the essay we looked at both are actually forms of democracy, but then are they same, then why are they different? So, people usually get confused. So, what is happening in the US, they know it is different from what usually ha what happens in India, but how are they different? So, the purpose here is to inform. Okay. Some questions you can ask yourselves, are you merely describing two things? Something like the example we saw you are describing the functions of the earth's atmosphere. Are you helping your readers to choose between two options? So, uh, we compared uh, two models of phone or two cars. So, there the purpose is to help your readers choose between the alternatives. 
then are you explaining one in terms of another? So, using analogy or other things like this or you know you are explaining the earth's atmosphere in terms of a window. So, what is your purpose? Accordingly, you will uh, you know structure your essay. So, a general blueprint you can follow for our comparison essay looks something like this. So, you have two items. Now, you take a first point of comparison, this may be similarity or difference and then you go into sub details. So, this we saw in the essay we looked at. So, it, it was very clear. So, presidential and uh, parliamentary. So, the first was differences. So, two points of differences okay. and then within first point of difference there were two sub points. So, after two points of differences there was one point of similarity. So, you structure in this way. So, you take it up in one paragraph you now go uh, to describe item A along these parameters immediately after that you go to item B. So, that the comparison becomes evident, then you take up second point in the next paragraph and so on. So, this kind of you know immediately shifting between item A and B that helps readers keep track of things and understand things in a better way. Alternatively, you can also follow a slightly different structure. Say, you have one paragraph about item A, then second paragraph about item B. So, going back to our example, say in one paragraph you talk about all the characteristics of parliamentary democracy. So, how the executive is elected and how the legislative members behave, then how uh, the chief executive is removed. So, all these aspects you discuss. Uh, but all these are related to only one item that is parliamentary democracy in one paragraph. And then you move to uh, presidential democracy and now you give all the details about presidential uh, democracy. And as we saw in the example, we use linkers like on the other hand in contrast when you are talking about uh, you know uh, differences you use linkers like both similarly uh, when you are talking about comparisons. So, this is how you can structure a comparison essay. Now, you have a task. Here are some topics. You can compare these and write an essay. I will discuss each of these very briefly. So, first one classical music and rock. So, uh, two forms of two genres you can say of music classical music and rock. So, what are similarities, what are uh, differences. So, if you do bit of research you uh, get some details then you can uh, go about them. Then a print and an online newspaper. So, here you are comparing a print version and an online version of the same newspaper. So, what similarities are they, what differences? Similarities could be the content, same stories may appear you know in both versions. Difference is you know how the content is presented and uh, say in newspaper you get one full story in one place, but online version there may only be a part of the story, then a link may be given and if you are interested you need to click and then it will take you to the full story. Then um, print version may not have many ads, online versions may have many ads, print version may not have videos, online version may have videos. Um, print version you, you have access only to that days newspaper, but online you can access all the previous uh, uh, you know archives as well. 
there is search facility available uh, online version. So, that way you can you know uh, compare uh, uh, these two versions of a newspaper. Next, developing a theory and building a house. So, you are developing an idea and um, you are constructing a house. Are there any similarities and differences? So, in both you start from a scratch, you need building blocks, you need you know something uh, to link. So, uh, connections you need you know and then you need to uh, uh, finalize it, then check again. So, there are many similarities. So, uh, you can demolish an argument, similarly you can demolish a house. So, if it is the foundation is not strong, your theory collapses, similarly your house also collapses. So, uh, uh, there are actually you know some similarities uh, between these two, but there are differences as well. One is an intellectual exercise, the other is uh, more of physical thing. Um, and um, developing a theory may require you to read a lot, uh, building a house may not. Um, so, you uh, for building a house you can consult your neighbors, friends, but, but a theory an idea you may not want to. So, there are differences as well. Finally, reading a book and exploring a new place. So, both these things are uh, you know ways to get to know about new things. So, you can read a book to understand something or you explore a new place. Both these are um, hobbies which are considered good, uh, you know you can develop these to spend qu some uh, quality time. Um, then um, in both you know you, you start with something unknown and as you progress things become known to you. Um, there may be surprises involved in both of these. Uh, so, there may be difficulties involved, you may take help of uh, others in both these. So, there are similarities, there are differences as well. So, book you can read sitting inside your home, but this you cannot do you know uh, this more you know uh, people who are more introvert may like it, this people who are extroverts they may like it. So, there are uh, differences as well. So, summing up today we looked at two important patterns of organization. We started with classification and we observed that in order to classify the classification criteria should be sound and the categories we make should be non overlapping. They should be uh, easily distinguishable the categories you make. And then when we looked at a comparison essay, here we observe that we can only compare things which are similar, two very dissimilar things cannot be compared. So, we can use this uh, strategy to understand a new thing or to describe a particular thing in detail or to help readers choose between alternatives. Thank you.